What's going on everybody? Gareth here with FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. You could probably tell that today we're going to be doing some type of transmission service and you'd be exactly right. We're going to be working on an 8HP45 transmission which is manufactured by ZF. The ZF 8HP is a very common transmission used by a lot of different auto manufacturers. There's millions of these transmissions on the road and one thing that's common about this transmission is most of these auto manufacturers don't list a service interval which is insane because ZF who engineered, builds, and you know, does the design of the transmission, they have their own service interval, which is eight years, 80,000 kilometers, which is about 50,000 miles. And that is really the recommendation that we have for any vehicle that has one of these transmissions. Doesn't matter if it's in a BMW, Chrysler, uh, Land Rover, it's the same process through and through. Before we go into showing you the steps on how we're gonna go about doing this, you probably noticed the beakers too. What we're gonna be doing is sending out a sample of the fluid off the Blackstone Laboratories, have them take a look at it, analyze it. We're gonna have those results at the end of the video, so stick around for that. We're just gonna to try to get a little scientific with this and see if that 50,000 mile suggested interval makes sense. Uh, but before we go ahead and start doing the DIY, here's some of the tools you're gonna to need. So some of the required tools you're gonna to need for this job, you need a torque wrench that can do on the low end of the metric torque range. So we're torquing to four newton meters, so you need something that goes down really low. Uh, a couple of rashes, three eighths drive, small one, a long one. Using an eight millimeter wrench to deal with a little T40, uh, small little drive. Uh, we have a 10 millimeter round, eight millimeter round, eight millimeter uh, socket for removing the splash shield underneath the car. And then a long T40 uh, Torx driver for some of the other oil pan bolts. And it also helps to have a power filler versus sitting underneath the car and manually pumping the fluid in. So. If you get your hands on one of these, it's gonna help a lot, make the job go by a lot faster. Also in this DIY, you're gonna need a scan tool that's capable of measuring the transmission oil temperature. If you don't have a scan tool that is capable of measuring the oil temperature, you can also just use a generic temperature probe. As long as you can read upwards of 50 degrees Celsius, you're perfectly fine. In my opinion, it's easiest to use a scan tool, but like I said, if you don't have that, you could also use a temperature probe. Shooting a laser at the oil pan is, uh, you know, for the temperature is not gonna be worth it in this case because that's just ambient temperature. You do want the temperature of the fluid itself. So you do need to measure it either with a probe or a scan tool. All right, so with the tools laid out, let's go ahead and get started. Step number one, we're gonna remove this little splash shield here, which covers the uh, transmission oil pan. Uh, one thing to note is I did let the car cool down the final fill that we want to do is between 40 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. We'll talk about that step at the end. Uh, but you, what you don't want to do is drain the transmission with the transmission operating temperature because when you go to put fluid back in, that fluid is going to heat up to operating temperature and you're not going to be able to get the proper fill level. So make sure that the transmission oil temperature is dropped down well below that threshold. So not only can you drain a lot more, but when you go to refill it, you have some, some room to work with. So we have five eight millimeter screws that hold this in. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. So what's really nice about the 80HP transmission, at least in this BMW application, is the fill plug is nowhere near the drive shaft, which is over here on the left side of the car. So clean and clear, no obstructions, right out in the open. It's an eight millimeter hex. And you know, make sure that the socket is in there all the way. You don't wanna strip this out. And you're just gonna crack it free. But whatever you do, and anything that has a fill and drain plug, make sure that the fill plug comes off first because if this can't come off and you drained it, you're obviously in for a very bad time. Next up, we have our drain plug, which is right here on the pan. It's a 10 millimeter Allen. It's plastic, so it's really not torqued that tight. Should come off very easily. I really like what I see on this transmission. It looks like the fluid is very clean, which is a good thing. It obviously has a little bit of varnish to it, but it's still very clear. It's not dark and black or misty or milky looking. That's when you would be concerned. But this is part of the sample we're gonna send off. Next up, we have 13 uh, T40 screws that hold the oil pan to the bottom of the transmission. 
it's worth noting that the, and at least in this case, and this is a more common setup on the 8HP transmission, is the oil pan all, is also the oil filter. So if you're doing this, you'll want to replace, obviously, the pan at the same time. There's no point in putting new fluid in if you have an old filter in place. So the key here is we're going to crack these free, but I'll leave a couple of screws in there loose just to support this thing. You don't want the thing to fall down and drop fluid all over the place because even though we've drained fluid, there's still going to be more in here and a little bit more in the transmission casing. These uh, bolts in the rear are a really tight spot because of the cross member for the transfer case. So we're just using a little T40 bit instead. You know, the other option, if you run into a situation like this, is you could lower the transfer case cross member. This is only gonna to apply to an all-wheel drive vehicle, maybe, depending on the design of the cross member, whether it's in the way of the pan. But I would avoid doing that at all costs. If you have a stubby T40, you can normally get in there and get those bolts loosened, and then you can thread them out by hand. That's gonna be the much easier option. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let this drip for a couple of minutes. Uh, this right here is the mechatronic unit, which is both the valve body and the transmission control unit all in one. Uh, you can see the solenoids. This is our parking lock solenoid or parking pole solenoid over here. And uh, we also covered in a video how to get one of these transmissions into neutral if you can't start the car. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw a little quick link up for that. But you have a mechanical release over here, which is what this bolt's for. It goes up, pushes the parking pole up, uh, and basically does what this solenoid would do normally. So before we put the new pan on, we want to go ahead and clean the outer edge where the pan sits and where the gasket has to seal. I want to make sure there's no fluid. Let's take a little bit of fresh fluid and we're going to lubricate the O-ring. Uh, this is the filter here and it feeds the uh, oil pump of the transmission. So it goes up through there. I want to make sure that O-ring is lubricated. You also want to make sure the O-ring came off of the original pan and didn't get stuck up in there. In this case, it came out. Also note, the ZF pan, which is what we sell, um, has the gasket pre-installed on, so you don't need to worry about putting a gasket or ordering a gasket. When you buy the oil pan kit, it comes with all the hardware, everything you need to install, so pretty much ready to go out of the box. Now just pretty much push this up into place. Felt the O-ring just sort of seat. Wanna make sure that that seats, otherwise you'll have an oil pressure problem. And you don't want that. I'm just gonna put one of these screws in by hand. We do have a torquing sequence here. Uh, and that's just to evenly load up the gasket so that it seals properly. So we're gonna follow that. Also worth noting the oil pan kit comes with replacement screws, which you wanna use new ones. You don't wanna use the original ones. What generally happens is the threads get filled up with corrosion. So you want to go ahead and replace them and they're already included in anyway, so no reason not to use what's included. So next up we're going to torque the transmission pan bolts. Spec is 4 Nm plus 45 degrees. Honestly, you could probably just do 10 newton meters standard, um, but I'm gonna follow the specification on these and just do it that way. You have to do a pattern, so we're starting here, number one, then number two, and then it alternates back and forth in a crisscross pattern. These bolts in the rear, I'm gonna have to just kind of feel for it, but you're not going for a crazy torque spec. You're just looking to evenly compress the gasket against the bottom of the transmission housing. So there's actually a couple of different torquing sequences for these oil pans on these transmissions. Uh, ZF has their own version, BMW has their own version. Uh, in this DIY, I'm using BMW's version. Generally speaking, I don't think it really matters all that much as long as you use an alternating sequence of tightening down the bolts, making sure that the gasket is evenly compressed, you're gonna be fine. You can follow the ZF, you can follow the BMW or the car manufacturer's suggestions. Uh, either method's gonna be perfectly fine in this situation. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do our first fill on the transmission. Uh, this is the cold fill. So this is not gonna be the final fill. All we're looking to do is uh, fill up the sump. 
uh, to the maximum level, and then we're going to start the car and let it get up to temperature after that. Just using a CTA 7400 power filler. You can obviously do this without, but we have access to it here in the shop, and it makes things a little easier. Put too much pressure into it. And we're just kind of let this thing go until it starts pouring out. So we got our first fill done and we go ahead and throw the fill plug in temporarily, of course, because it's going to come back off to do the final check. So I'm not really going to tighten that that much. It's hand tight. All right. So now here comes the portion where you do need a scan tool that can read the oil temperature of the trans uh, transmission. In this case, I'm using the MX-808. This is my own scan tool. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm underneath the BMW specific functions, not the OBD, uh, OBD functions, and I'm underneath the electronic gear monitoring. Go to live data, and you're going to get a whole bunch of different data PIDs. Um, we're going to look at operating variables, and uh, I'm looking at oil temperature of transmission, which right now is registering 33 Celsius. Uh, we need to get this back up to 40 to 50 degrees Celsius to check the final fill level. Uh, but before we do that, we need to start the car. That's going to pump fluid from the uh, oil pan back up into the torque converter. And then um, we're going to shift the transmission manually through the gears. That's going to basically actuate every solenoid and get fluid back into the mechatronic unit. So we're going to go ahead and start the car, get the transmission back up to temperature. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and shift the transmission through each gear. Make sure you keep your foot on the brake. You do not want the car moving at this point. Uh, we're going to put it through every single gear, reverse, neutral, drive, and also through the manual gears as well. We're going to try to hold in every single gear. All right. Went through the gears, nothing complained. Uh, so now we're just waiting for that 40 to 50 degrees Celsius temperature, which is when we do the final check. When we do the final check, the engine is gonna be running. So the transmission is gonna be running. I do expect that fluid level to have dropped a little bit. That would be normal. Uh, if it doesn't drop, that's still fine. Um, but you know, ideally I'd like to do this at about 40 to 45 degrees Celsius, but you do get that 10 degree window. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get out of the car and leave it running. I'm gonna get it back up in the air. So right now our oil temp's at 41C. It was actually at 42, but it's bouncing back and forth right now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open up the fill plug here since we're within the window and take a look at what we have. Yep, we're gonna have to add a little bit of fluid. Obviously no fluid is coming off. That means we're a little bit low. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more until it spills out. That is full now. So we're waiting for the excess uh, to drain off here. I'm gonna wait until it's a slow stream versus this strong stream. Um, but once this stream uh, slows down, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, put the fill plug back on it. Give everything a clean wiping, shut the car off. We'll take it for a test drive, make sure everything is good, but uh, pretty much there. Fill plug is on. So we've topped up the transmission uh, between the final fill temperature range. Everything is good, no fault codes in the transmission. We still do need to uh, take it for a quick test drive just to make sure everything is good, but I'm uh, confident everything is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the splash shield back on that I took off. And like I said, those are five eight millimeter uh, screws. Also worth noting, you know, now's a good time to check for any leaks. If there was something wrong with how you installed the transmission uh, oil pan, you would definitely see leaks at this point. Um, so there's no leaks. Everything seems good. So feel confident enough bolting this back together. So we're back in the office. It's roughly three weeks later. We sent the sample that we got in the beginning of the video uh, out to Blackstone Laboratories to have it analyzed because of course ZF says 
50,000 miles is the service interval uh, mileage wise for the fluid in these transmissions while a lot of car manufacturers have much higher intervals or no intervals at all. And so we're looking to get some truth on this. And uh, you could see here on the report up on the screen in front of you, everything looks fantastic. And to be honest with you, that's exactly what I would look to expect. You do not want to service these transmissions if the fluid is in terrible shape. Uh, we have heard of certain situations on vehicles with over 100,000 miles where this fluid sludges up. Now, whether that's because of a uh, transmission cooler failure, especially if the transmission cooler is part of the cooling system, uh, the actual engine cooling system and coolant and oil is mixed. I don't know specifically on that, but very similar to how you'd want to go about changing your engine oil or really other, any other fluid on the car. You don't change the fluid when it's in horrific condition. You want to change the fluid when it's still in good condition. The condition of the fluid to a degree tells you the condition of the transmission itself. So in this case, we see that everything is fine in terms of wear materials. This was the original fill from the, from the factory. We have put in ZF8 HP or ZF Lifeguard 8 fluid, which is the OE recommended fluid for these transmissions. And realistically, I'll be looking to do this again in 50,000 miles. Be interested to see what those results are later on. But yeah, the results are great. In my opinion, this, this is a realistic time to do the service. I wouldn't push this out too far. Uh, even though the fluid's still in great shape, realistically, that's when you wanna change the operating fluids on anything. Once you've gone past a certain point, it's really too late. All right, so with that said, you know, showing you through the whole process about how to service this transmission, you can see it's very straightforward. I know there's a fear factor about servicing these transmissions because of the discrepancy between manufacturers saying lifetime fill and the transmission manufacturers saying something different. Uh, but, you know, like, I, like you can see from the results, it's worth doing uh, the job, especially around 50,000 miles. The only caveat to that is if the transmission has a ton of miles on it, you take a fluid uh, sample and it really smells burnt and there's a lot of material suspended in it, I would really recommend not servicing the transmission in that case because you could cause further problems. But if the transmission fluid is clean, there's no worries, there's no problems doing it. As long as you follow the procedure, you're going to be perfectly fine. And as you can see, it's fairly easy, fairly straightforward job to do. And as long as you have certain tools, you can definitely take care of it yourself, no problem. But hope you learned something from the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. Hit that like button. Also subscribe, we've got plenty more videos on the way. And as always, I'll see you for the next one. Later, everybody. Too easy.